<laughs> oh, hello everyone out there in uh, Twitchlandia. We're just having a little bit of a conversation here on this episode of Starward Bound, The Incredible Journey. Thank you for spending your Tuesday evening here with us. Uh, Want to run around to uh, do, do a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of pimping out the uh, sponsors there. Tabletoploot.com. Head on over there and use the comp coupon code WebDM15 to receive 15% off. And I believe, aren't they doing a, a special right now? It's 20% off. Mm -hmm. So, hey, there's even it's even better than I just said already. And that's only been like five seconds since I said it. So there's that. Um, so head on over there. Use that coupon code. Uh, support our sponsors. The people, Trust me, the people here tonight rolling dice, they're rolling dice from Tabletop Loot. Uh, also, if you have the if you haven't followed us, go ahead and follow us or give us a subscription. If you got a that Twitch Prime subscription burning a hole in your pocket, why don't you go ahead and send it send it uh, this way? I just re-upped mine for WebDM here. It's selfish, I know, but it's mine and I'll do what I want. So let's go around to cast and crew and see how everybody's doing tonight, see who they're playing before we get started. First off, Emma, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing fantastic, Pruitt. I have had a lot more than two hours of sleep this week, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Don't take it for granted if if you've, you've never had two hours of sleep before. It's fucking terrible. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I am happy to be on the back of a manta ray who wishes to speak to us. It makes us feel so special, I think. It's good. I'm going to be playing Hildegard Hilgard. The Mountain Dwarf Clerk. And yeah, I ran out of things to talk about already. Well, that's okay. You're the communications director. You're thinking of stuff all day, every day. So we'll I've been thinking about esports today, Pruitt. Esports. Yep, mostly. They're electronic. E They're sports. Let's play them. I had to ask uh, one of our Patreon patrons what they were. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's you know, it's whatever. It's sports, but with an E. We don't need to get into that. Uh, let's move it on over. Uh, Trey, how are you doing, sir? Hey, man, I am still over here, like, taking my pulse from time to time. It's been one of those kind of days where it's just been running nonstop, and now I'm all fired up, and I'm ready to jump in the dark cool and get to talking to some crazy creatures. Whew. Guess I'm not helping my pressure situation much but um in case you haven't figured it out i am playing dakul a half elf kinsey monk who loves herbal delight and rubbing on rodents so uh yeah man let's roll i'm not quite sure what to say that last part uh next uh, we have kiana kiana how are you doing this evening i am doing quite all right it, it's finals week so uh <laughs> i'm almost done this summer <laughs> gotta wait till monday uh pray that i survive until then but I'm here playing uh, your favorite uh, murder robot, uh, Warforged Barbarian E-404. Um, I'm super excited to talk to a space manta ray. I don't know what's happening. It's awesome. It's cool. That's all I need to know. Uh, and I can't wait to get into this. <laughs> yes, uh, of course. And, you know, Kiana, as long as you have love in your heart, you know you'll stay alive. So there is that. And last but not least, Greg, how are you doing, sir? How's it going? I'm doing well, buddy. I This is uh, one of the highlights of my week. I cannot wait to play Elry Tossbottle, my halfling arcane trickster, as we journey through the stars and currently on the back of a great big space fish. And uh, it just doesn't get any better than that. This is, this is the missing component of the current, I think maybe Spelljammer should have been addressed, but I, I, will, I digress. I'll just leave it at that as I drift back into space. And as you drift back into space, uh, wh wh where do we, what, do, what do we find Elry? Uh, where do we find Elry? What's going on with the log, man? Okay, so we have to go back to go forward, as I often do when I run my Pulp Cthulhu campaigns. So we're going back just a few brief moments to the oil bath of E-404 and Elry. And as Elry thinks to himself out loud Elry's log supplemental <laughs> as I sit here with oil creeping into and around every orifice and appendage from my neck down I rest beside my best friend E404 to review the events of the last few hours you know, we were attacked by humanoid faced dogs named yeth hounds that wanted to kill us 
We were further attacked by shadowy shadow guys, apparently from the Shadowfell, who also wanted to kill us. And finally, there was a beautiful woman wielding love chains, just like the whipping post back on Nero's. And she desperately wanted to tie me and Deku up to sex us to death. Now, while that's my preferred method of execution, today was not my day, nor was it Deku's. And so we live. The captain put my chain honey to the hammer, and that was that. Then there was a ton of boring stuff. Blah, blah, blah. These bad guys were fey creatures. Blah, blah, blah. The Dawn Rose has a fey essence in it. Blah, blah, blah. Zofia Sil might have something to do with it. Blah, blah, blah. Ledbetter is a prick. Confirmed. Blah, blah, blah. Who burned the back of the big fish we're flying on? Yeah. Then we were off to the frothy, foamy beard, which seemed awesome until I was tricked into masturbation. <coughs> College Bill finished the New Horizons research for Hilda, and De Cool cannonballed Professor Krill with drink and weed. And E-404 got an oil bath and scrub down, which leads me here. And he looks up at E-404. It's where I am right now. I hope I can get this oil out of my crack. <clears throat> I hope I can make it across the border. I hope to see my friend and shake his hand. I hope Emma types Dick Vane in chat again when I least expect it. I hope the Pacific is as blue as it has been in my dreams. I hope. Well, the Grand Magus just, Magus, whatever his name, just ruined our towel by, towel down by telling us the big fish we're flying on wants to talk to E-404. Well, I guess I'll go along. It's better than masturbating in an empty room, but not by much. <laughs> Elric Log Supplemental, signing off. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, <clears throat> <clears throat> it's, never, uh, it's never a dull moment, Greg. Thank you. Thank you for that. So as you were departing the frothy beard and making your way across the lawn, you see that a, uh, a slew of griffin mounts have been saddled up and are prepared. You see uh, Krill and the Grand Magus mounting too. There's a couple of other mages already mounted and you have four mounts in front of you. One a little bit bigger than the others, and they're kind of like looking at E-404 and like motioning towards that mount for them. <clears throat> but the Grand Magus speaks up. It's like, it is only um, a few hours flight, but uh, we'll be there before you know it. I hope this goes well. And he looks... He looks a bit unsure. I mean, this is a rather unprecedented moment as he uh, as he did put forth. And so y'all mount up and fly, fly towards the manta ray's head. It is just an expanse of just purple skin with splotches of yellow. Through the flight, you can almost see the 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 rhythmic movements of its wings bat just a bit. Um, and it is not, it seems like no time at all, really, before in the distance you you can see like a, um, a rectangular rise, uh, a staircase leading up. And <clears throat> as, you're, as you're coming into land, the griffins kind of pull up and they beat their wings and hover just above landing. And you see the Grand Magus hop off his griffin, and you see Krill with some actual dexterity manage to slide off his mount and, and retain his feet. Their mounts never actually putting their claws on the back of the beast. And then they turn, they break and begin turning off. You see the other mages peeling off, peeling off their mounts and their mounts pulling away. Um, and y'all follow suit, I assume. And here you are as you plop your feet down on the actual back of Rontame. Um, everyone give me a charisma saving throw. 
as you put your feet down um, on this animal's back. By the way, you can choose to just Hilda got a 13. <laughs> now cool got an eight. Mm -hmm. Have we rested? Uh, yes, the seventh the seventh level was technically a short rest. Oh. I failed to Okay. So mm -hmm. uh I'm gonna re-roll that then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thirteen charisma. Okay. Do you want to eat? East miraculously got a nineteen. Nineteen. Is not you, a you land at all. and you feel you feel nothing. Uh, the other three, as you land, you feel um, a, um, just the lightest tinge of energy, like you breached it with your feet, and then it moves up and around you, uh, moving up your body until it kind of encompasses you, and it's just this light hum at the edge of your of your perception. But other than that, you you don't feel anything really. Just as you walk, you can feel kind of this this energy flowing with you as you move, um, as your legs brush together. Um, if you touch your fingers, you can kind of feel a closing of a current and then opening again. And before you, like I said, is a staircase leading up to this uh, rectangular kind of uh, rise um, amidst just nothingness. And out here, away from the town, uh, there is just star stars horizon to horizon. Um, uh, but above here, there's four torches lit at the top of the stairs, uh, they're all surrounding what looks like a, a round um, pool of some kind, or maybe just a, another smaller rise. Um, but Krill and the Grand Magus are flanking either side of the stairs, and the Grand Magus, hand on one staff, mo is motioning for E to ascend the stairs. E kind of just looks around for a sec and then goes up the stairs okay and as you crest the stairs you do and see you do indeed see like a small probably two foot in diameter pool um it is it has got the bluest water it is like the color of shimmering sapphires as it lightly laps uh in this small enclosure and the magus comes up behind you and just um if you just um stand and um, I would say clear your mind, but I'm I'm not sure like what process that is for one of your kind. But ah, uh, that would just be refreshing and clearing my case. Fine. Yes, that that sounds that sounds right. <clears throat> and you see him kind of walk off, and uh, as he walks up here, Krill follows, and you know he motions for for the rest to follow. And you can see on either side, there's a there's just a simple uh, stone bench on either side of this. Uh, and looks like Krill and uh, the Magus are, are going to the left side uh, to sit down. And with, you can see some tension and apprehension both in both of their, like the, the set of their jaw and like the grip on their staff a little whiteness is coming to the knuckles. Um, looks like they're a tad uneasy with this. But E, standing before you is uh, this round pool. E kind of looks at their friends. Is this all right? <laughs> Probably noticing a bit of the tension. Well, don't be rude. At least say hello. We should have a code word or something. Like, if you say, you know, like, I don't know, orchid or something, I'll stab it. I do not think that stabbing the beast that a entire city place is wise. And also the fact that we are the size of fleas. I guess I'm just a warrior. I'm sorry. 
Go on, E, you'll be just fine. Just try it. All right. They're going to very slowly <laughs> step into the pool. Okay. You step up into the pool, one foot goes in, and it's only an inch deep, if that. Like, it looks like it's actually kind of like maybe like a foot deep, just by the, the shimmer and how clear it is. But you quickly tell, like, your foot is barely in any water. And your second foot steps in, and as it makes contact and you look forward, you feel yourself being sucked down, straight down. Those of you standing on the plinth, you see E-404 just standing there, unmoving. But E, you are taken down, down further, even further, through darkness, through, through loneliness, through nothingness, until you see space, all of space. You can see the Toho sphere itself from inside. Your perspective is that grand. In fact, you look out and you can think you make out in the distance the next sphere over, a small marble in the distance. So long is your sight, so grand is your perception. And then you begin to feel the sensation of the other beasts about this sphere. You can sense their movements almost as you look and in the distance see the, the phoenix. You see a turtle. You see a fire serpent slithering on the far side of the sphere. You see at the bottom of the sphere a small infant, this new beast, this star child that has just been born these three decades past, flailing about in the darkness without any kind of bond or mother or leadership or anything. And then you feel a sensation you have never felt. You feel air passing in through the gills of your neck, expanding your lungs and your chest and exhaling out through your mouth. And you feel your wings beating. You feel your tail behind you whipping, keeping any that would dare sneak up behind you at bay. And you realize that you are Rontame. You are sensing yourself as Rontame. And in the span of this breath that you have taken, the following conversation takes place. I have not felt your sting in many cycles. Where have you been? I... I... Do not know. This is my first time being on in here. No. You have been here before as part of many. But now you are just the one. Where are your counterparts? Where are your others? I... If my memory files are correct, they are... gone. I do not know what happened to some of them, but... some were disintegrated by beholders. The parasites of the void, the ones that brought you to me, to conquer me, to control me. Why, why would I be used to control things I don't want to do that. You were also being controlled. But I recognize the sting. I felt it. 
many times. But I turned you back so many cycles ago. I... I do not remember either of those instances, but I am sorry for hurting you. I did not mean to. Then look deeper. And at that, he, your perception pulls back, like the camera pulling back up and out of Rontame upon its back. There is no Magate Acadium. There is no town. There's a small settlement roughly in the same area, but you see the telltale signs of war, of battle. You see beholder tyrant ships with their massive eyes pulled up alongside. You see those like you, units like yours, dispersing out on the back of Rontame. You see the inhabitants that were here before being cut down. You see beholders moving about Rontame, moving to the head to the very spot that you now stand. You see them trying and failing to control Rontame. You see the battle as the manta ray itself begins to turn using its tail to rend ships in half with one whip, flinging those like you into space, never to be recovered. You see the beholders retreating after a time. You know that all of this, you're not quite sure exactly how long it took, but it was a time, it was a protracted struggle, but it flashes by in an instant. And you remember, you remember these moments, these flashes this battle. You remember burning the back of Rontame over and over again, trying to will it into submission, to intimidate it, to scare it. And you remember being tossed through space, only to be collected again later on the same ship that brought you here. And as your focus shifts back, you look up from the plinth that you are standing on. And you can still hear the voice in your head, though. The parasites. I sense their mark. I sense their mark on two. Two that follow you. And they are the fall. And then just like that, you are standing once more. Standing in an inch of water. The mages are slumped against one another, passed out. Your friends, whatever they've been doing for the last six hours, you're not quite sure, but it has been six hours. And now you stand at the head of Rontame. Okay. And all of you see E kind of like move <laughs> just a little bit. I think she's back. Uh, I... I am back? Yes. Well? How you feeling, E? It's, it's been a while. How long was it? Like six, five, six hours. How is that 
Our conversation must have only lasted a few moments. Nope. It's like six hours. <laughs> I am oh. sorry for keeping you for so long. I... I... What? What happened? What did it want? I connected with Ronsme. We had a conversation. I... I have been here before. I... Connect? <laughs> what? Okay, Greg. Uh, so, uh, are we in danger? I do not think so, no. Okay, whew. I was just making sure. And at, at that, at, at y'all's conversation, the start of your conversation, the two, the two mages kind of like, well, they, they both had like dozed off. And oh, 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 what happened? Yes. Oh, is everything okay? Is the beast fine? Is he upset? No. Oh. More curious. Curious. More trying to tell me things. Tell, t- tell you, tell you things. And he t- kind of like looks a little like, like what things? Grand Magus, have there been histories of attacks on Ratsume in the past? Well, I mean, when we came up upon him at the end of the last war, he's in a sore shape, scarring on his back. The previous inhabitants here were all massacred. Took some time for him to trust us, but we eventually gained that trust and began building the life that we have here. Some of these two and a half centuries passed, and it's it's been tough, but you know, we I believe we've forged quite a bond with it. It only really directs us which directions to go and you say it was curious? It, it 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 showed like depth of thought. Yes, we had quite the extended conversation. And like both mages' eyes are like dinner plates at that. Have you not conversed with Vox May before? We we get just general our seers that uh, it allows to talk. It, it's just general thoughts. It's just general feelings like go this way or danger or, you know, hunger, like basic concepts really is all it relates. It's all we can get from it. It's it's usually too much for them. Maybe your unique design allows you to process things much faster. I don't, I'm astounded, quite honestly. He kind of just is uncharacteristically quiet for a, a giant event like this. They normally would be mm-hmm. babbling with some excitement. Well, it, unless you would, unless you would just like to stay here for a while, we should probably head back. Um, I have kept all of you here for what I have heard for six hours. Well, it's, you know, it's a large beast. I'm sure it has time and size scales. It might change. I I, I have to write a whole new paper on this entire thing now. I mean, generally where it's minutes. But um, anyway, we should begin heading back. Um, If you uh, would like to step into this circle one at a time, 
we will teleport back to the uh, to the Magate Acadium. Uh, we wanted to fly out here just so you. It was actually at Krill's insistence. It seems like uh, some of you were interested in seeing the back of this beast uh, from a new vantage. So, but we can teleport back uh, quickly, please. And he kind of just motions. What's up? Do we have to teleport? I had a good time on this on this griffin thing. Oh, well, we would need to summon the griffins again. It would take some time for them to get here. Um, oh, that's okay then. <laughs> I, will, I will happily jump in your teleporting machine thingy. Okay. And yeah, you, uh, you know, as they say, he uh, walks over to the same circle that you stood in and he mutters a few, uh, a few words and writing and runes along the edge of the rim begin to light up ever so gently. And he just motions uh, for the first of you to step in. I'll go first. Okay. And you you step in and you become light. And then now you are in, uh, you reappear in uh, what looks like a very fine study, a wizard study maybe. Um, looking out uh, surrounded by glass. Like there are no walls to this study. It is a solid pane of glass that goes all the way around um, as you can look out over the entire town that the Magate Acadium encompasses in the bay behind you and um, you realize that you're probably in the wizard's tower itself at the top of the Magate Acadium um, and one by one y'all step into the circle and you are whisked back to the Magate Acadium in a matter of moments um, Dekul, give me a give me an intelligence check <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Uh, three and two is a five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stuff is stuff. Yeah. There's stuff around. <laughs> it's all a little overwhelming. This is going to take forever. A uh, little help, guys. <clears throat> And you are all, after a matter of moments, you're all back. Uh, you're in this wizard's study. And soon after, Krill and uh, the, the Grand Magus uh, join you. And the Magus himself, he just lets his staff go and it kind of floats over to a corner and sits down and he unshoulders his, his robe and it hangs itself up on a, on a robe hook on the wall. And he steps behind his desk and sits down and it's just like, Oh, um, quite a lot has happened. Uh, do you all have any idea of your next, uh, your next steps, where you plan to go next? I understand that you've made quite uh, use of our library and uh, those in it. Yes, we have. I have been doing some reading on the New Horizons, uh, put to me by a really, really quality student named Bill. You know Bill? Mm. Uh, young William. Yes, he's quite a, the astute pupil. Yeah, Billy, he knows his shit. Um, so, he compiled me something. Um, I quite enjoyed it. Hmm curious about these New Horizons people. Well, they came through um, about 50 years ago and made quite a big splash. Uh, they took down a company that was manufacturing a very illicit uh, healing potion that was blues. Had some psychoactive um, some addictive properties to it. But they're the ones that discovered the egg of the Star Child itself and they, uh, they fought... Um, uh, a cult in Hratsatha. It was uh, quite a, a perilous adventure. Um, I should have yeah. just asked you. Oh, well, I mean, yes. You, I was alive. I was here then. I mean... You were? Oh, my goodness. Well, I, he kind of plops his... flicks his pointy ears of being a 
a high elf. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm quite interested. Do you remember Bezalel? He's I understand he's the a warforged. Mm, yes, he was a warforged, yes. Quite a quite a crude make. Uh not so uh, streamlined as E four oh four. Um looked like he was um created by, you know, a single inventor. He had that it had that look about it, uh, kind of a artisanal home forged. Whereas home, home can, forged. Yes. As you look at E, you can see by the lines that this is industrial work. I mean I do remember a factory. Mm, of your home world, possibly. Whatever home world that is, I do not know. Do you guys have any idea? Do you know anything else? About Warforged? Well, when we looked in the library, there was a list of planets that could have possibly been home to a factory like that. However, they were all fallen during the war. Mm. Interesting. Well, I believe we have a whole lot of options, right? We are formally on the tail of one pirate named Harkin. Are you familiar? Harkin. Harkin. Hmm. Some alliteration there, yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. Fucking near Haskell Harkin. Haskell, yes. I've heard the name. He has, um... Unfortunately, his shadow has graced the door of this sphere more than a few times. Never, um, never here, though. We wouldn't allow his kind to, uh, to dock here. Well, do you know who might let him on? Because we seem to think he is here and we have some personal business. Seem to think he's here. Hmm. Well, um, quite frankly, I mean, there are really only two places a ship could put down. That would be either here or on the turtle Aspidotian, the giant turtle. Giant turtle. Yes, it, um, its shell is um, displaced in space and time, shall we say, is the easy way to put it. But it has a concave back, and its back, it bears an ocean. There are five tribes that live there. They trade with us for, you know, various things, food, sundries. Hmm. Are the tribes friendly? Uh, for the most part. Um, although they can, um, every now and again, when le it's time to pick leaders, they, they can get rather, um, things can get contentious amongst them, but for the most part, they maintain the peace. They understand, mu much like we do, living alongside these beasts with them. Um, you're not afforded um, certain rash acts that you would see other places, but it doesn't mean that people can't um, lose their head from time to time. And just one more time, just how does Harkin know these tribal village again? Is this just a pit stop for him? I that that I do not know. I I'm just telling you that they live on its back, and it's the only other place with a body of water for a ship to land. Um, so I, I I'm not sure. I. I have just heard reports from, from our FTL uh, patrols here. They they chase him off every now and again. Um, okay, that bit of information could be quite useful, knowing where his last whereabouts are. Mm. That is true. Um, whether or not, he, you know, he has uh, birthed his ship at the, on Aspidotian, I mean, I, I'm not sure. I know we're not due to expect another shipment from there for 
a week or two, maybe. Okay. I have one more question that doesn't deal with pirates. Hmm. I have been having strange reoccurring dreams of a giant Naogi standing on space rocks like meteors or asteroids. Hmm. Has any of this jog your memory? Standing on asteroids. Could it could it be representative of anything? Where were you when you had these dreams? <laughs> Half comatose. <laughs> oh, but, <laughs> yes, but but where? Like, what I was, sphere? Were you in the wild space? Were you in the Phlogiston? Were you? It was, we were in wild space. Right, Emma, we were in wild space when we, I got connected the second time to the machine. First time to the machine, wild space. Uh, yeah. Still in Euros. Where? Yeah, like we're, wild we're space. Still we, in Euros? Yeah, it, wild space means inside the sphere. That's wild okay. space. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we were still in the neurosphere. Hmm. Still in the neurosphere. Yes. And this is after your your in, interaction with the ship itself. Yes. That is correct. I have this strange connection with these monsters, and every time I am connected to it, any types of their technology, I get these visions in my head that give me of who they are and what they might be. Hmm. Well, um, and, and since y'all left the Neurosphere, have you had any more? Uh, we have not had any more. However, we have, we were giving a strange tracking device that is used to detect life. It, it functions loosely with the same technology that they use with the ships. Oh, oh really? Yes. Maybe, maybe you smart, you smart guys over here can now figure out a better way of using this device. Well, I, I would, it, I would rather enjoy to have a look at it for sure. Um, if, if you would permit, I mean, any piece of Neogi technology is, is something worth studying because we, we get so little of it. We've gotten some reports from our sister school in Neros 4. Um, uh, of their efforts with the, the, the I believe it was the St. Stephen that y'all sold them. Um, they, they are making some headway as far as figuring out how the technology works, um, that it, it draws the, the very essence of life from its from what it is hooked up to. Um, it's cr quite deadly. It's, it's an insidious device, but I, I, would, I would like to inspect it for sure, yes. Absolutely. But of course, this has to, I have to get the approval from our captain. If Hilda is cool with letting go of the device, then I am certainly okay with it. I'm cool. There's a fucked up piece of shit. <laughs> oh, well, Ed, I appreciate your, your candor in the matter. <laughs> However uncouth. <clears throat> um, Okay, well, we will uh, we will look at this device and see what we can tell you. Um, but yes, um, if there, is there anything else I can help you with? Potions. <laughs> I would like if you have something that can help our our weary travels. Sometimes we get in the mid in the middle of. Uh, of uh, events that causes harm and we need something to help with the healing. Ah, well, um, yes, I, I believe I can help you out with that, sure. And he walks over to like a, a, a chest and opens the top. And it's almost like a, like a tackle box where the, this drawer like, like rotates up and uh, you see like three R rows of uh, of potions. Um, please, um, you may uh, you may take your pick. Ah, I would like to inspect the potion. Uh, is there any uh, is anybody uh, wiser than me on knowing what potions to look for? Uh, well, <laughs> as you as you go over there, you do see that. Um, everything's labeled there's healing potions there's uh there's one potion of giant strength um there's a couple of resistance potions uh and uh there is a potion of heroism also but they're, they're mostly just varieties of of healing potion really uh, 
I will take a, a good old fashioned regular healing potion. Okay. You you take a potion of greater healing. That heals forty four plus four, just so you know. Forty four plus four. Okay. And there are there are four of those. Ah, yes. Is there a limit to what we have? I know there is, but what is that magic number? A limit to what? Like what you can take? Yes. Oh, um, you know. You can have two each. Yes. What were the other ones put? There is uh, one potion of giant strength. There, there are various potions of healing. Um, there's four greater. There's two superior. Uh, there's also two uh, potions of resistance. One fire, one acid. And a potion of heroism. I don't remember if I said that. Or well, the resistance to fire could could prove handy in the Flagastan. Oh, quite, yes. Especially if you uh, don't get around fire. Whatever you do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, well, we would like a portion of, of uh, the fire stuff. Yes, the flame heat hot box. Yes, That's, mm. that is the one we want. But it, it is my pleasure to, to assist you in that regard. Oh, we are most grateful. Thank you so much. I'd like to take a superior healing potion. Okay. okay. I have a question. Yes, sir, so Master Toss Bottle. Oh, or he's just woken up from his nap. <laughs> um, we have to, we've been attacked by these things that uh, creep around in shadows and make uh, darkness. Do you have anything that, um, I don't know, it seems to me that if something likes darkness, according to your Professor Krill, these guys are from the Shadowfell, um, is there anything that you could have since we have massive amounts of credit with your your institution that creates some type of sunlight or like uh, you know bright light to scare these guys that like they says they only like to come out in shadows. Mm. And I'm th- if we have something that makes bright light, boy, that would that would that would help us. Hmm. Um. I tell you what. And he like stands up and he walks over to an opposite wall. And it just looks like a, again, this, all the walls look just like glass. And he walks up and just presses his hand and a door opens uh, in the, the pane of glass itself. And you see inside and there is inside a, an immense blue sapphire, amorphous in form. It is, it has no, it's not cut. It is. It is. Looks like it was birthed this way, and wherever it was plucked from, it is whole. And at the very end uh, of 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 one little thread of it, he he takes and just kind of plucks off the very end, and he turns around to you, Elry, and he hands this blue sapphire over to you. Um. And he says, "This um, this will do in a pinch." which happens to be the way to activate it. It is one use, but for all intent and purposes, it will create daylight. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And Elri, um, just looking at this, you, like, you can't help but think that you have seen like this looks familiar. What he like this crystal, this piece of sapphire he's handing you. There's something about it that just like you're like. Uh, can I make a roll or? Yeah, yeah. If you want, you can go and give me a, a an, an intelligence roll. But you can't help that. And Dakul, you got that. You got that feeling earlier as well. 
Uh, that's going to be a 25. 25. Um, you, you know for, a f like, you, you just feel it, and you know in your heart of hearts because of just the, the, per the perfection of, of this little, like, teardrop of sapphire that he handed you, like, that's the same crystal that's in the end of your, your mage lock pistol. Like, you're almost without a doubt for sure. Do you, do, like, do you have it on you? Do you pull that out, by the way? It's always out. It's just, it's it's prominently displayed, as is the gaudy rapier. Okay. As it, you know, like, the handle's just, like, right over his crotch at all times. Okay. Well, yeah, when you pull that out, like, like you see, you know, the, the Grand Magus, like, he kind of looks at it, like, funny. He's like, what is that device that you have? It's a pistol. I don't know. That's what they called it. That's what I'm calling it. Might might I look look at it briefly? Sure. Say it. And he like picks it up and he looks at it and he like mutters an incantation, and his hands like his eyes glow uh, with a with a dim light as he like looks over this thing. And like hit, as he looks at it, his mouth is further and further agape, and he hands it over to Master Krill and he's looking at it like and his 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 gaze becomes almost concerned um is a is a word that you would use and he like turns around immediately and looks uh at the crystal that he just plucked a small piece from and he begins to study it and turn it on its on a little turnstile that it has he has it on and and he shuts the door and turns back to you, and where did you procure this? I got it at an auction, and it came from the fucking ear, Haskell Harkin. You don't say. I do. You did just say, that is true. Okay. Because this crystal at the end can only come from one place. It comes from the plane of water. It is known as, as the tears of water. And that is where it develops. It is the pure sapphire that you could possibly find. It is immeasurably powerful depending on how you mine it, how you prepare it. This is troubling, to say the least. So, you have no way of knowing what, where this device came from, though. Just that it was originally in the possession of the fucking ear, Haskell Harkin, whom we are hunting down across the spheres. Mm. May I have my gun back? Yeah, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. And he kind of gives it back. Um, slightly hesitant, but hands it over all the same. <sighs> Out of curiosity, Chief, if we were to put this crystal in front of the other crystal that's already in the gun, what would happen? I shudder to think what would happen. Let's but, speculate. Well, what does your gun do? May I? And he like motions at a door or sorry, at a window, and the you, the window opens, and you feel like a slight breeze as, and you're looking out into just space. Like there's nothing that direction. He just pulls and shoots without looking, and a blue streak just fires off, and he's like, "Okay, <clears throat> well, that is real." Uh, 
I've heard rumors in the Roche sphere, far, far around the arm. There's a war going on with descriptions of weapons that create the light that you just fired. Do you know anything of this? Nope. Hmm. I was hoping there would be a connection there. Is it Harkin? He seemed pretty easy to give this up for an auction item, to, I guess, to make some quick cash. I guess if he felt that he could be getting some more of them, because he's maybe running trade or smuggling to either side or both sides of a conflict. That just might be the seventh level talking, though. Well, it does have its lingering effects, Mr. Tossbottle. That's why we all make it off limits to students. Anyway. <clears throat> yes. This is troubling. I will reach out to uh, my contacts in the Roche sphere. I'm awaiting um, to hear back from Ambassador Sill on your request to speak with her. Um, Man, many, many wheels are in motion. What do you plan to do, adventurers, um, in the meantime? In the meantime. Maybe, I think we need to discuss where do we want to go. We still must get our revenge for Hawken. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, indeed. What, I mean, what brought you here? What, what was it that brought you here with him? He had the logs. He was bringing cargo between, I believe it was here and Neros, correct? Here and Neros, yes. Uh, yes. 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 He, he was that leg, and then there was another leg that went from Neros to Roche. Yes, Roche. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we thought we might be able to catch him here, and we almost got him en route. Mm. But he managed to blink away somehow. Blink away? I teleported, or I wasn't there. The whole thing was on fire. I don't know. Tele Gone. Teleported from his ship. From his ship. Yes, blinked out, correct? How far can you teleport? And at that, like, the cool you, it jogs in your memory. And you remember the circle that he stepped in. It, it looked very similar to the design of the one that y'all were on and you used to teleport back to the, to the Maggot Acadia. It is one of their, their prime, like, uh, focuses here. This is the same teleportation device that Hawk can use to escape the burning ship, correct? Mm. Uh, well, I mean, a teleportation circle, I mean, can be can be installed pretty much anywhere. It's how long it lasts. It depends on, you know, how insight often. Check. Okay. Yeah, insight. That's a rocking fifteen right there. That's a, that's a solid number, Pruitt. Um, you sense that he is uh, that he is nervous and apprehensive. Um, not, it doesn't look like he's holding anything back, but more of just like, he's worried, you know, that the conspiracy or whatever's going on might involve his school. Like you can tell he's kind of like, he's, he's genuinely concerned of, of what this might mean if, if he had like a, a something of the same design as something that was made here. Do you have Where students who... Do you have any students who dabble with this sort of technology? Well, I mean, it is one of our prime focuses. I, we have many students here. It's, you know, there's at least a couple of hundred in the class alone. Um, I, I'm 
honestly, I'm not sure uh, what to tell you other than that. Is this the, is this type of technology used for somebody that could be not not for a first year student, but a more advanced student, or more perhaps a professor who may know how to use this? Well, definitely, there are professors that teach this very transdimensionality. I mean, transporting both. Is there not a is there not a record or log of all the ships that move in and out of this area? Well, for the yes, for Rontame itself, yes, there is. But for the other beasts, I cannot say. Um, I can tell you, you know, shipments that go from here to, say, Aspidotion, the turtle, or whatever. Um, we have transfer students that go to different beasts to study them. Um, I, I, there are many avenues uh, to pick up the threads. If there is only one other beast that had water to for a ship to land, then if the student did not leave the sphere, it must have happened when the ship was landed. If it was a student, that is, I do not wish to implicate Grand Magus, but you have many professors in your faculty, correct? Well, that, yes, that is correct. Yes. If you um, had to guess, well, you're the Grand Magus. It's your job to know these people, isn't it? Well, uh, yes, I've I've known them all many years. I mean, I'm four hundred and fifty years old. <laughs> I've known most of them since they've arrived here. That's why I'm quite stunned as to any of them being part of something like this. You can't see anybody doing it. I'm, I'm not 450, but I'm not that far behind. And I know in my gut if anybody did something, it's usually Elry. Um, well, I mean, uh, the best I can do is, I mean, you already have built up quite a rapport with Professor Krill. I mean, he's in charge of... Uh, Xenobiology, so he's in charge of the transfer students, students that have gone to other places. Maybe they made contact with them there. I don't know. I mean, but it's, I mean, that's that's all I can think of, possibly. Um, but we have students travel all over this sphere, uh, for sure. Well, not all over, but to most of the beasts here. Um. Ellery wants to ask the next question, but he wants to make sure that he is studying the face of the Grand Magus when he says so. Is there anybody, how do you, how do your students uh, come to be here? Do they pay a tuition? Uh, are they invited by you all? Um, if you mind me asking, how does one become a student of the Acadium? Uh, generally by uh, reference letter. Um whether it is on a home world, a former student of here, or they just know of the Magate Acadium, say maybe through the Neros Four school, um, but they will write a letter here uh, submitting, uh, you know, essays and uh, all the references. And we decide then whether or not to take the student. And generally the family pays part of a tuition, but um, I mean, mostly it's, we need students to, ensure the running of this place. So uh, tuition is is fairly low, to be quite honest. Okay. Um, my other question, my, my friend, is, is there anyone that seems to be... Oh, we toss bottle, Esquire. Uh, is there anybody that seems to be just hanging on here with their studies? Um, perhaps you're thinking about asking them to leave. Somebody that uh, may have a affinity for teleportation, but nothing else, as if they don't hold an interest in anything beyond the realm of manipulating or transporting material or matter. Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't say that he's barely hanging on. He could definitely be a much he could do better, but I mean, your your very own uh, assistant there, uh, Captain Hildegard. Not College William Bill. William is. 
mean, he is a teleportation major, but he takes a lot of electives. Kind of eschews some of his studies. Well, it seems to me that College Bill knows about level seven, which, to my knowledge, is expensive. I mean, for a student who is paying tuition and has been invited here, um, by letter of reference, normally, in my opinion, students don't have that much money. But um, this bill, he seems to be at least on par with your professors and his ability to access this level seven, which I was told was very expensive before I was allowed to go masturbate in a room by myself for free. Um, well, first off, um, you, for all intent and purposes, they, they are real. I mean, nope. illusions have form and nope yeah well um to each their own does does bill seem to need any money does he seem well to do does he have you say he does electives does he hold additional jobs does he tutor does he do anything or does he come from a wealthy family does he um i do not believe he comes from a wealthy family no no um, he wanted us to get him to level seven. Mm. But he knew about it. Well, it occasionally does, the knowledge does slip out, no matter how much we try to keep it. It was never really intended to be used for the public. It was more of an experiment, really. Lonely wizards. So, Bill, is he, uh, seem well off? Does he ever need money? Um, I, I, quite honestly, I've never familiarized myself with the particulars of his lifestyle. So I, in all honestly, I can't really answer that question, uh, Master Tossbottle. Well, you've been around for 450 years. I'm sure you can pick out a someone that's not dressed correctly or somebody that's wearing old robes or somebody that uh, should really kind of spiffy up a bit. Or, you know, you think to yourself, well, Poor old college Bill can't because he's like super poor. But if you haven't noticed that, then I would hmm. assume college Bill probably has never come across that way. I, it could be that I just didn't notice, quite honestly. Really? You're 450 years old. You notice everything. <laughs> I, I do wish that I had the powers of perception that you... Uh, seem to think me capable of. Where's College Bill right now, William? Um, hang on just one second. And he goes over and pulls out a, a, a small ledger, flips through it. Um, it only looks like it has like 10 pages in it, but he keeps flipping and keeps flipping, keeps flipping pages and he gets, finally gets, hmm, he's, um, it looks like he's actually in an off period. Um, I believe he generally spends his time in the library. Okay. At least that's when I see him in his off time. Great. Hilda marches out without saying anything. Okay. Where are you headed? Headed to the library to go get Billy. Okay. So Hilda, you march uh, out, <laughs> out the door down the spiral staircase, down the tower, down the middle staircase from the second floor to the first floor. If anybody wants to come with her, she's very slow going downstairs. <laughs> okay. uh, Darko would like to go, and I am going to nudge Krill so that he can come along with us as well. <clears throat> oh, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Cool, but uh, I have to, the event that just happened, at Rontame, I, I really must must write this down. Can we catch up later, please? Please. Yeah, that's okay. We can catch up later. But before you go, I do have one quick question about Rontame. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. That, that tingling sensation that we felt, that, that, that electricity. Yes. Yeah, oh, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, what, what is that? Uh, from what, what we basically can tell is it's the, uh, it's the essence of his, um, of his of his psyche, his katra, it's, it's the, it's the feeling of, of his sensing of you. 
in that moment, he he feels you on his back, and he and he is putting his attention on you directly. It's why we, if you look out, and he looks out, you know, on the ground, there's there's not the back of the beast. You there is like a road. There is a material that that everything in this town sits upon. You're not sitting on his back directly, right? Right. So that's that's why we that's why we have the the ground here the way it is, so um, he can. Put, not focus on us, uh, but yeah, it's it's quite exhilarating, isn't it? Ah, it is quite exhilarating. I like the tingling sensation. But you brought another question that makes me even more curious. Why do you not want Brontemay to know where you are, or does he already know where everybody is, and we just don't get the tingling sensation? Well, it's it's more of just like not uh, taxing his his focus. Uh, because if you get if you gather too many people in one place, he he can't help but like sense it, and uh, it's like an itch, you know. Like if you have something on you, you can't. You have to want to want to constantly brush it. So it's more it's more of just allowing him to just live, and it's it's like we're like a backpack on his back, oh. right? And so it's just a thing that he bears, and he he seems to not mind. We we do our part to uh, to keep him. To keep him clear at flying, and uh, we 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 gather the bounty of of that which he provides, and we live in a symbiotic relationship. Oh. <laughs> okay. And it like he's like real like wringing his hands like. <laughs> yeah. Did, can, can we yes. take this up for later? Uh, yes, we can. I will. I will leave you to your studies, but do not forget my yogi either. And thank you for the pamphlets with all of the great information. Oh, the, the, the yogi here, and he like hands you the form. And uh, I thought I shared that with you. But. Yeah. Okay. Well, good studies to you, good friend. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, you too. And he like kind of looks, gives you kind of a double look as he like runs, scampers off to his, uh, to his study. As you descend down to the second floor and then to the first. Yes, I, I, I'll be speeding up to catch up with, with Hilda. Okay. Elvi? Yeah? I know you do not enjoy libraries very much. Will you I be... enjoy mysteries. So you will be joining us this time? Yes, I will. I will attend the library with you, but by my presence will be determined by the implications of this bill friend of yours. If he turns out he's just okay, I will probably vanish. But if there's danger afoot or a mystery to solve, I'll be right there with you, buddy. Okay, and later, I need to speak with you and. Everyone else about the conversation. But later. Was it, was it weird? That would certainly be one adjective to describe it. Was it getting hit with a hammer or the opposite of getting hit with a hammer or somewhere in between? That is a odd scale to be using for this experience, but somewhere in between? He climbs up on E-404's back. No. It's okay not to know. I don't know a lot of things. I need Hilda or Dekul or you to tell me what it's going on, so. I'm sure it was uh, super weird. Yeah, maybe. Even you will be able to help bring some insight. There was a lot of information. I'll help any way I can. I know. Thank you. Sure. And he kind of puts his head down on the top of E-404s. And uh, he's probably asleep within about 30 seconds. <laughs> yep, yeah, as he climbs down the stairs to catch up with everybody. Okay. 
and yeah, y'all catch up with uh, the furious walk of uh, Captain Hildegard, and uh, about the time that you reach the main hallway, um, and across the hall, diagonal is the uh, entrance to the library of the Magate Acadium itself. All right, Hilda, we cannot kill him in front of all of these people. I mean, we can kill him when he's not in front of all these people? I, oh, I can sign off on that a little bit more than outright bloodshed in the middle of all of these sacred books. It's just, these, these damn college kids get in my way all the time. I thought he was a good one, Billiam. He's kind of horny, but no, who is it in college? You remember back in your younger days when you were learning your trade, when you were broke, and everything you did was an attempt to, to get money for beer and sex. He may be no different. Just misguided. There are standards, Deku. You yeah. never aided and embedded a known fucking ear? Not a fucking ear, but I do aid and abet Elry. He's just as guilty from time to time. I guess, but I mean, he's affable at least. Yes, that is because he is ours. Very disappointed in Billy. A good stun talking too fast. If something else happens, then maybe we kill him. It's guilt cool. She's going to take a very long swig before she goes in. Okay. You 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 <laughs> take a long draw off your flask and open the door to the near silent library. Um, looking around, uh, you you see various wizards, students of uh, every color robe here, walking to and fro. Uh, it looks like it's a busier time of the library. Uh, maybe like right after classes have let out, people are doing their assignments before the evening. <clears throat> and so uh, looking around, uh, it's it, it only takes like a minute or two uh, before you see like one of the one of the kind of the, the, the little kiosks for, you know, the help, quote unquote. Um, and you see, you know, William sitting over there. Looks like he's reading a book. Uh, next to him, he's got his, you know, his leather book bag. And, uh, you know, just sitting there reading. Looks like he's maybe eating an apple or something, some kind of fruit. Uh. Helda calls out across the library. She says, College Bill. Okay. Um, how far away from him were you when you called out? As far as possible. And she calls out as loudly and annoyed obnoxiously as possible. Okay. Um, you call out loud and obnoxious. And those of y'all right around Hilda, you hear this bellowing, college bill! But you hear it quickly, like, just being smothered like a blanket as it leaves her mouth. And like maybe, like, somebody, like, five feet away kind of looks around like they heard something. Um, and then you remember, like, the magic that sits about this place that keeps everything nice and quiet. Um, like, Bill doesn't even, like, Still reading. Hilda Hilda starts cursing under her breath like Joe Pesci in Home Alone. And <laughs> um, El cursing. Yeah. Yes. El Elry wakes up and he, he looks over at Hilda and he says, There's only one way to know if this kid's really legit or not. Let's all charge him. If he sees us running at him, if he takes off running, if he just cowers and pisses himself, we know he's a student. If he takes off he's a seasoned criminal and i'll shoot him i think that's just a normal fight or flight response i do not know if that is a appropriate okay. scale for judgment hold oh, on wait give wait one minute i think i have a plan that doesn't require absolute havoc and uh, that's when uh <laughs> We never do good with those. Dark, Dark, Dark gonna go into his, his into his little med kit and pull out that vial of that paralysis spit from that vicious creature we fought a few not too long ago. Elry. Oh yes, yes, the Elry. one with the very distinctive features. Right, Elry. he is eating an apple over there. 
Maybe if you use one of your magic magician hands that float about and wipe this slightly on his apple, he can be knocked out and we can quietly drag him back to the ship. Jesus Christ, whoever that is, to cool. This is, this is diabolical. This is, my God, I've never been prouder. I, I, I will, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do, do it, it. Nicole. The cool hands, it'll be the vile. Apologies out there. Um, <clears throat> something might have been said in the backstage chat and the whole crew is indisposed with laughter. <clears throat> So, you're going to try to poison uh, young William's apple and then kidnap him back to the Don Rose. That is correct. Okay. Uh, if that's the case, then go ahead and give me the sleight of hand check for the apple. <laughs> I'm trembling over here. <laughs> Not 20. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so yeah, he's he, like like I said, he's sitting there, he's reading, he's reading a tome, and he's got his, his apple, and he just takes a bite. And you you send um what's the hand's name again? Claude? Uh no, Claude is my uh invisible servant. Hans unseen servant. Hans, Hans of course. Is of course. So you send Hans over and he's he just is holding the apple like in his hand and you just you just wipe right across where he's uh, been biting, and he's just tapping the apple with his finger, and he... And as he's reading, he just kind of like... And then the apple falls out of his hand, and he's just kind of like... And he's just not moving, but you can, you can see his hands slightly a tremble as it seems Jeez, that the that the uh, par paralysis poison has taken root not as a, not as a chance <laughs> um, uh, hey ah uh, Billy boy hey, hey we were looking for you for for from the uh, state, the level seven, we have missed you. Uh, Darko saying this out loud as if he's having a conversation. Oh, uh, you, oh, you silly boy, you, you just drank way too much yet again. Somebody, yeah, he four four, kind <laughs> citizen. Would you come over here and grab this young man so we can tuck him in? He, he's so tired. What? What's going on? Shh. I'm looking at his backpack. Okay. Lost the quicker it will be over. Uh, yeah. Uh, Elry, go and give me an investigation. I'm just rolling that twenty. Damn it. I need it here. Um, nine. A nine. Um, you start looking through it. Uh, we'll say what you do notice is uh, it, his his book bag is is made from very finely crafted leather. It's not terribly old. Um, he's got a couple of books in there, you know, the, the normal stuff that you would, you would think, uh, teleportation through dimensions, uh, uh, you know, sight to sight teleportation, things like that. He's, and you just kind of sifting through there and there's notes and various formulae for d calculating distance. And, you know, it, it, it seems like student stuff, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's what you find. Without showing or pulling anything out of the bag, he immediately closes it and looks up at Bill and says, how could you, Bill? A pirate, you're working with the fucking ears. What? 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 What's, what's going on? I mean, it looks like he's, he's just trying to struggle to talk. <laughs> All right, let's, let's get him out of here. You take him back to the ship, yes. Let's okay, take, take um, what, what are y'all going to do to how are you taking him out? Like, what? what is your Weekend at Bernie strategy for taking him out of a library without anyone going, hey, what are y'all doing to that student? 
Just wondering. <laughs> uh, I tried to bait it by saying out loud, he is drunk and we are taking him home. Elry yeah. pulls out a large piece of paper from one of the notebooks that he has. He said he was working in a, mm -hmm. he pulls it out and he takes a minute and writes on the outside of it. He takes one of his own necklaces and strings it up around his neck. And it says, um, it says, I fucked up and can't cast hold person. And he <laughs> puts it around his neck and he casts Tensor's floating disc underneath the chair and parades him out. And he's pointing and laughing ah, ha, as he's just making a huge show of it. Give me a deception check with advantage. <laughs> just for that description. Okay. Deceptione. That's an 18. Okay. Um, yeah, you start going out and you see a couple of uh, other students and maybe like student assistants, library assistants, and like they're like walking by and they're like looking and, you know, shaking their head, rolling their eyes. You see one of them just bust out laughing, like gut laughing, but you can kind of hear it, you know, from about 10 feet away. Uh, you know, one, it looks like maybe like a, a teacher is starts to come up to ask you something, but then they like look at the student and look at you all like, and just keep and just kind of walk by you, um, but yeah, you manage to make it out of the uh, the, the library into the hallway. Uh, like I said, it's already kind of after classes, so the hallway there's not a lot of traffic in it. Uh, but you know, to your left is right out the door to the docks and the Don Rose. Let's take him below deck. Okay. Uh, yeah, y'all y'all managed to get him on the Dawn Rose and take him below decks. And about that time is when the poison, or the paralysis starts to wear off. Um, and so, uh, you know, he immediately starts like, "What are you? What are you? Why are you? Why are you kidnapping me? What's what's going on? What did I do? What 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 are you doing?" Hilda ah. puts her hand over his mouth. Not like hard, like like kind of nice, and just like just shut up, William. Oh, but I did I not? What's the matter? Did I not double space? I don't know. What's what did I do? Well, you didn't double space, but that's not what this. Is about. I'm sorry. I was it was in a hurry. I think we need Cole here. Cole, cr cr who? Is it Cole? Krill. Krill. What? I don't know anybody's names. Okay. <laughs> he, he will go get Cole <laughs> if we're on the ship. Okay. Uh, she finds Cole uh, le le lazily napping on the deck somewhere. Like, just, you know, he, he generally likes to nap uh, to save his strength. Cole. Cole. Huh? Huh? Cole. What? <clears throat> and he, like, starts up and sits up, adjusts his, his, his new glasses that he just got. <clears throat> Were you practicing reading? Uh, I was dreaming about practicing to read. Yes, I was. It's baby steps is what you got to take, right? That's what Caster keeps telling me. You don't want to push it too hard. You get, I get headaches. That would be correct. However, uh, Captain Hilda would like to see you, if that oh. is okay. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, lead the way. He lifts his his bulk up behind E and follows you downstairs. Come back with Cole. Oh, Captain, what you need me to do? Oh, Cole, I need you to be generally intimidating and tear the limbs off of this young man if it's necessary. Now, college <laughs> bill. And Cole turns and looks and is like, <laughs> and steps into the room. And he just reaches down and takes an arm in each of of College Bill's, one arm in each hand. And his hands easily wrap all the way from almost shoulder to elbow as he just kind of, and you hear just the crack of knuckles as he uh, starts to squeeze. Just say when, Captain. Well, College Bill. 
being trustworthy is very important to us on the Dawn Rose, and I trust my crew. I'm going to let them talk to you, because frankly, I'm too mad and I'm too disappointed. What did I do? What did I do? <laughs> You're hurting my feelings. <laughs> me feel it's called bad. acting, Emma. I'm being method. <laughs> And take it from here. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Everybody, calm down. Calm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what he said. College Bill, College Bill, listen. You teleported somebody here a bit back for a little bit of extra cash. No worries. We just want to know why the Graham... Magus, Meg, I can't get that right. He told us it was you. Um, we just want to know where they went. Are they still here? You know, I, I didn't. I didn't teleport anyone. I, I. Did you help with the circle? The, the mage hand gently cups Bill's testicles. Oh. <gasps> Did you did you help somebody with a circle, Bill? I well, I, I did. Um, I might have a little. Okay. I was last year. I was on a. I was I was at Aspidotian. I was on the turtle. It was the fourth spire. I was I was. I was studying a particular species of shark, and there was a ship, and I was paid, and I cast it. I just cast it every day. That's all I did. That's all they told me to do. They said, go in here, and they just cast that. And I, I know the spell at least enough, and I did, and I did for a year. That's all I did. I don't ever saw anybody. I don't know what it was. It was just like I got some money, and they said, cast this thing. And I was like, oh, well, the, oh, I promise. Who said that? Who told you to cast this spell here? Who was that that person that put you in this position where you could get torn asunder or have your balls smashed? Who 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 left you who left your, your dick in the wind, Bill? I I I, 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 I just need a name. Can't. You can't? He squeezes the mage and begins to squeeze instead of caress. <laughs> It, Krill. it was that fucker Krill. Hey, that's your buddy, Dakul. <laughs> I cannot believe Master Krill. No. I swear. Oh. I swear. I got I to stay on the ship. I was the whole was the whole thing. It was like, hey, you could practice your you could practice your casting while you stay here. And the, the ship just stayed there. There was nobody there. Literally just sat there for a fucking year. I slept on it, and I just had to cast a thing once a day. It was practice. When do you meet with Master Krill again? Krill's in the pen, buddy. Um, that's why he had to go write down some shit, because he had to run away because he knew we were on to him. Uh, where would Master Krill run? Honestly. No, 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 no don't say you don't know. You think, you think, lie to me. Lie to me. Lie to me. I'm not lying. I don't no? know. I'm asking you to. Now, come on, hold on. Shh, everybody, calm down. Everyone. Shh. Bill's trying to remember something. Bill, yes. do you, did Master Krill have a place he liked to stay on the turtle? He is quite fond of the ranches where all of the animals stay. Is that where he could be? I mean, I stayed on the fourth spire. I, I don't know if that's where he stayed. I honestly, I don't know. Okay. Hey, Bill, it's great. You didn't do anything wrong. You were manipulated. It's like you were a young actor. You just had to do it for work. I get it. It's not a problem. Uh, a word of caution. If you, if we do decide to let you go, if we decide, I want you to know 
how easy it was for us to find you. And it will be very easy for us to find you again. I, I, I believe you. Like looks around at all of you and looks at, at Cole's meaty hands, like pulling his shoulders to the, each side. Like, I promise. Pruitt, that's a 16 on the insight check that I, I'm pretty sure we're, we're good here, but I just want to make sure before I... I mean, this this guy, he has he has spilled his guts. He has spilled his everything else below. Um, his pants are wet. There's an odd smell in the room. Um, He's he like has chuck- left nothing okay. on the table. Yeah. <laughs> and the last thing I've done. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we can get rid of him. What? That's loose. No, no, I'm not going to kill you. Whoa. At least the hand, the hand leaves his nuts and slaps him on the cheek a little bit. <laughs> it's okay. Now carry on. And be careful with those apples. You never know. Do you not press the ventilation? <laughs> and he kind of like holds his pants as he's like running out, like runs upstairs and get out of here. Down the gangplank, up the dock. Let you hear anymore. <laughs> Hilda, I am going to kill the krill. Alright, I'll help you. Yes. Should we not try to get some information first? Hmm. And perhaps maybe not actually Kill him unless this is a hyperbole that you are using. Maybe. Ah, I have one idea of where he could be. He is quite fond of the, of his zoology, xenobiology. He's one of those allergies. He may be around the animals. Hmm. I don't think he loves anything more then what is going on the back of this beast? We also know he doesn't know teleportation well enough to do it himself, or he wouldn't have, Christ, he wouldn't have brought in Bill. Um, I mean, that's not, Bill was not a tough egg to crack. No. Uh, if he is a xenobiologist, we can't rule out the fact that he has some type of escape clause where he's going to zippity zappity zoop, but he can't do it inside the Acadium because they said that magic can't get in or out of that place. Hmm. So he's going to have to leave. We need There's some... a mystery of what? Do you think he is going to run away? He may have found a way off of the safe confines of the city and somewhere on the vast expanse of Brontem is back. Can we tell the Grand Mages? Be able to find them faster than we can, maybe. Can Either we the, trust the Grand Mages? Exactly. You have a 450-year-old wizard that either allowed this to happen under his nose or is aware of it. Either way, you're dealing with a fool or a very powerful enemy. Hmm. What could bring him out? Maybe if we did something to slightly agitate Brontemir. He I, might care more about this big beast than he does his own personal safety. I, if I remember correctly, she did want to speak with at least myself to figure out what I had spoken to Brontemay about. Maybe we should ask Brontemay. Maybe you should I, meet with him. I do not know if we can just Communicate at will. No, you meet with Krill. If he's still here, send word to the Acadium that you're ready to meet with him because he wants to talk with you. Data. Where would we want to meet with him? How big is the hole in E404's chest where she keeps all of our money and stuff? <laughs> They're not, it's not that big. I'm not that biggie. <laughs> Could I like Ocean's Eleven this shit? <laughs> Where do you plan on going? 
to go meet with Crow, probably. Oh, no, but we... where? Yeah, you... that's, that's what you I was remember, trying to figure. If you remember the warnings when you first got here, the majority of the buildings here use extra dimensional space. So that's the only crux of, that's why they're like, you don't really need to have that out and about because if you just walk in somewhere, you might rip a hole into the astral plane. So, I mean, you can have it walking about, but it's more about putting an extra dimensional space inside of another extra dimensional space. Oh, oh no, no, I'm, I'm talking about that actual cavity they have in their chest where they open up and they put all of our, our money and stuff in. Oh! He's actual chest cavity. Oh, <laughs> yeah. um... <laughs> There's not a big enough space for that, no. There's a there's big, a big enough, enough space for, for E to put the bag of holding. Like, there's a big enough pocket for the bag of holding itself to fit in. Um, That's fair. Yeah. But no, it's uh, E is not like Bender, where it's just <laughs> open up a barrel and there's just everything. No, there's there's actual, like, gears and servos and, you know, tubing and wires and circuits. Actual stuff that needs to be in the chest. Yeah, yeah. That's where E's heart is. <laughs> well, we need to find him. And we have not taken a long rest yet, right? Yeah, it's been a while. Can we use uh, hit dice? I'm assuming in that six hours that we had. Uh, well, I tell you what. No, no, you can count that as a long rest. Yes. We'll say that, yes, you could count that as a long rest. So you could go ahead and spin hit die if you needed to. Um, any spells you would recover. If we can find a meeting spot, I could speak with Krill and all of you could be there or hidden, I suppose. Hmm, I agree. Well, if the cool went with you, that wouldn't seem that odd, because the cool and Krill have a rapport. Yes. And then Hilda and I can do what we do best and stay back and be small and sneaky. Huh. Maybe Helion has come down with a sickness that needs to be looked out. That could be a reason for him to visit me as well. Let us meet. Okay. So, uh, what, what, what? How do you go about trying to set up a meet? All right. Um, uh, Dakul is going to try and go to. Uh, where, where, where are we? We are still. Uh, you're back on the Don Rose. We're still, yeah, we're still on the Don's Rose. Okay. Uh, Dakul's gonna go to uh, the the mess hall where everybody eats and, and, and kind of go through where the where the rubbish bin is, where all like the rotted meat and stuff is, and get his hand kind of slimy, kind of like slime it all on uh, all on Hellion, just to have him just kind of just kind of nasty smelling. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then uh, e, e four for me, you, you want to go take a look, go talk to the uh, to the head mate ma Magus. Uh, an enraged um, meeting at uh, someplace safe and comfortable for him at, at, at his stables. Uh, oh. You would want me to talk with the Grand Megas or to pass on the message? Ah, uh, that's right. One of us have to do it at a time, huh? I will wait at the stable. You go tell the Magus. And I will need some backup, so Hilda or Elri, I know one of you have got some kind of wily plan going on. One of you can accompany me. I, please. <laughs> well, I think if we all roll in there, Krill's gonna, if he's not already gone, he's gonna vanish. He's gonna be in the wind, but if we all kind of spread out, meander about like we've been doing, that doesn't seem weird, we're all over the place. If we continue to be all over the place and maybe just two of you approach him, you know, his good buddy, the cool and E404, that shouldn't raise any suspicion unless Bill's already gone there and he has more balls than what I felt. And uh, he's uh, told him. Wait a minute. I mean, yes, that's what I meant. <laughs> 
Okay. okay. So we are we have planned to meet. Am I am to, am I to ask him out tonight? Or are we kidnapping again? He's a wizard, Harry. He's going to uh He's going to be a I think he's going to be a bit of a stronger pill if he's the point man that's been dealing with somebody like that fucking ear Haskell Harkin. We need to uh we need to jump his ass. If you can get him to admit it, we'll show up. It is a bit forceful. It could work. Okay. The only problem that I see is, and maybe you guys can help me out with this, if we accidentally murder a professor, the Maggate Acadian, we might lose our discount. And that's of concern to me. Um, I wonder if there's any way that we can bring somebody in that if they witnessed or heard somebody admitting that, you know, heard Crow admitting that he was, in fact, in league with the fucking ear Haskell Harkin, um, that would keep us from losing our discount and possibly getting arrested and executed. Let's get College Bill again. College Bill. We go to see him again. I doubt College Bill has that type of clout. I've got somebody. Who? Um, I know a certain person in the kitchen that has been here for quite some time, and I would assume that Olga would be able to vouch for just about anything. And um, I could go ask her out on a walk, and we would just happen to be walking by the stables or wherever you guys happen to be. And I believe nobody trusts anybody in a university more than they trust their cook because one, they're keeping them alive. And two, they're certainly hoping that they're not shitting in the food. All terrible concerns. I think we have a plan. So from my understanding, we're gonna Cool and ear, gonna go. This is, Ke- this is Kiana's voice now. This yeah. is not <laughs> which means it's that convoluted that Kiana is asking for us to go. I'm over. just double checking. Oh. I'm just double checking. We're gonna go. <laughs> Shut up, Greg. <laughs> We're gonna go talk to him, and then you guys are gonna be getting Olga somehow. Uh-huh. Yeah, and bringing her to <laughs> hear this conversation. Right, is she well, listening in stealth? Uh, right, Elry has already established that he wanted, he asked Olga to join the crew of the uh, uh, Don Rose. It would only be if that rumor got out or if there was even any hint to it, you know, or if Olga was asked, um, she could say, yeah, he, he asked me to become part of the crew. I was thinking about it. Elry would, of course, bring his captain to Olga to see if they got along, you know, can't I, I can't I can't do the hiring. I'm not in charge. I'm not PR um, or HR. And so whenever um, they come, they could be walking around the area that you guys are meeting Krill. And it just so happens they've seen us all around this campus. It just so happens we're crossing paths. And then when you guys see us coming, you ask and then we're close enough and Olga can hear. It's foolproof. It's really one of the best plans it's I've ever come super up. foolproof. OK, it's like law and order, you guys. Uh, all right. Dun, dun. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna Great. hopefully assume that Krill is at the stables because otherwise this plan is gonna get fucky <laughs> real fast. Hey, bro, what is the name of that place so I can stop calling it the stables? Isn't that what is? Is it something they're, else? They're the they're the stables. Yeah. Okay, it is the stables. Okay. Just yeah. Sure. If you look on the if you look on the little map, it's the uh, right between the large green lawn. And then you see the smaller green lawn. Right between that, there's a vertical uh, row of buildings. Those are all stables. So yeah, I mean that's where he took you originally. Uh, and of course, that that the smaller patch is is just kind of like a an area where they let the animals out and walk around and eat grass. And then there's crops that grow. So you know. Okay. All right. Well, uh, unless there is some new business. I will head to the stables with my stankin' rodent. Okay. And E will accompany him. I thought you were going to get Krill. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm getting Krill then. Yeah. <laughs> I See, this is why I'm confused. <laughs> By all <laughs> of this. Best laid plans. <laughs> it's crystal. 
clear, Kiana. <laughs> right. The most crystal clear. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go get Krill. <laughs> Where okay, the so fuck he is? You're heading upstairs. I mean, at, at last you saw him, he said he was going to his study to write notes down. That's okay, the, yes, uh, okay. Cool as he left. And he okay. was walking off towards the... Okay, I totally missed that. Okay. <laughs> that would have helped me <laughs> understand this. Cool. I'm going to go get him. So, so E-404 is going upstairs to the to the uh, instructor in uh, the, the head's uh, tower. Um, the cool is going ahead and heading to the stables. And e and then Elry and Hilda, y'all are going to the kitchen to retrieve Olga. Yeah. That sound about right? Okay. Yep. So Elry and, and, uh, and Hilda, you arrive at the kitchen first. And it looks like uh, they're... they're they're just about to set up for the uh, the evening meal, um, and you see Olga just you know kind of rearranging seats out in the in the general cafeteria area as you come in. There she is, Captain. There's Olga. Olga is coming with us, maybe. Olga, it's me, Elry. Oh, Elry, Elry, how are you? How how are you? I'm doing well. So, this is my Captain. Food? No, no, this is my captain, Hilda. Uh, she captains the Don Rose. Uh, hopefully, she'll be your captain soon, too. Oh, <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves, Elry. And she steps forward, uh, Captain, and she extends her hand in a typical dwarven, like, forearm lock of a, of a handshake. Uh, oh. Hilda will give her one, too. Oh, Olga Beard Bristle, how are you? Nice to meet you, Hildegard Hilgard. Hmm. I hear you run a tight ship. I hear you're a great cook. Oh, well, I, I've been known to set fire to things, but yes, for the most part, they come out all right. I've only heard Ellery give out, like, four compliments in the entire time we've known each other. And at least one of them was about you. Well, I'm, I'm touched. I'm generally touched. Genuinely touched. What, what can I do for you today? Are you here for a meal? Uh, it's still a little early. Uh, here in the next hour or so, we'll be serving the evening meal, but... Well, well good. Perfect time. Well, why don't you take a walk with us, and you guys can talk, and maybe we can even walk over and see the Dawn Rose, and you can say, oh, my God, what a beautiful ship. Let's, uh, you know, maybe that's something I need to do, and um, we can just take, a, we'll just take a walk. Let's start with a walk. Oh, what? Oh, oh, okay. Yes. And she kind of turns around and like uh, pulls a towel out from her belt and kind of throws it up on the counter. And like, I'll, I'll be back in a minute. And you just kind of, the staff is all, you know, they wave, okay. You know, and they're getting the, the meal ready. as She, uh, she follows you out of the cafeteria. Oh. Flawless execution. And so y'all are making your way out of the, where, where, where are you headed um, out of the Magate Acadium? Are you headed towards the lawn? Or We're going to meander for a bit and just basically wait until we see them kind of enter into the area. So hopefully we're kind of timing this all so. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, you, you know, you see Dekul, uh kind of lingering around the end of the stables. Uh but next to the stables, there are some warehouses and, and crops and whatever. And, you know, she's like, oh, I need to I need to go check on my tomatoes. Let's 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 walk over here. Um, and she kind of leads you to the very end of the garden there. Um, and, you know, she's general talking in general chit chat about food and food preparation. It's obviously what she knows and loves. Um, proper preheating temperatures and whatnot. And uh how you shouldn't cook vegetables too long. Um, I, would, I would assume this is probably also legit. This is probably also like a legit interview. This isn't like a oh, yeah. uh, play so, you know. <laughs> yes, imagine she and Hilda bond over how to how to like make an oven uh, like a balanced temperature the whole way. Oh, well, you know, it's all in the, the type of stone you use, I found. Finding an oven that works in the Flogistan, that's the hardest feat. I've known a few dwarven ships to make it work, though. I'll tell you that. But we that side digress. <laughs> and she, you know, y'all are, are doing that. Um, E-404. You get up to the, the mage's uh, tower or whatever. Um, and in the, in the central tower, uh, 
where y'all came down from the spiral staircase from the Grand Magus's uh, office. There are there are about five other doors in this in this circular room, and there is a door that says, you know, uh, Magus Krill, um, head of xenobiology. There's Simple a, wooden door. Yeah, there's a very resounding. Don't. Yeah, as you as you knock on it, the door like gives way as it wasn't completely shut. Hello. Uh, you're you're greeted with silence. A open the door. Okay, E, you open the door and you see uh, Krill's office. It is the office of a xenobiologist. There are skeleton, there are bones on shelves of various sizes and makes. There are a, a, a troll skull here. There's jars with various, you know, what you would assume are unborn or like fetuses. Uh, you, lining each, each wall, there are rows of shelves. Um, uh, and off to the side, kind of tucked in the corner, is is a small little desk with just papers piled high, like endless papers, reports, various, uh, just like student reports, all these other reports, and they're almost like falling over. And when you look about uh, the, the desk itself, there are a few drawers pulled open, things pulled out. Um, it's general, a general sense of like... Um, Somebody who has like the the desk looks like it's been gone through. It's been rifled through and things taken out, uh, probably in great haste. Um, that but that's what you see, just kind of like at a cursory look. Do you further investigate? Yep. Okay, go ahead and give me that roll there. Um, and as you as you do that, um, down on the ground. Uh, as you are walking ab about the end of the uh, the crops here, this corner, this kind of corner of town is is very quiet. There's not a lot going on here. There's a couple of like processing uh, 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 rooms off to your side here, uh, where they process the lichen that is is harvested from Rontame in various stages. But uh, most people are inside, um, and then there's just warehouses. But as you're as you're all kind of standing here and you're talking to Olga, um, it's at that moment that um, out of out of the the plants themselves, out of the rows of, of produce that are growing on the vine, um, you hear a familiar yelp, a howl, if you will. And I'm gonna need the three of you there to go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw. God damn it. Mothers! <laughs> um, this, is, this is against being a feared, right? Yes, this is a fear effect. Uh, that's going to include you, Deku. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> Net 20! <laughs> okay, you're good. 12 for Hilda. Okay. Fucking 19, I spent a lock. Okay. Elry, you feel uh, a biting fear crawl up your spine and you manage to shake it off before it takes hold. Uh, Dekul, you're just like leaning like, where the hell is everybody at? And you hear it and, you're, and you, you remember, but it does not phase you. Hilda, from not 20 feet away in these plants, you see the red eyes of this Yeth Hound come bounding and it's letting out this howl and all you want to do is run away. Run away at all haste. Um, Olga, she's like, oh, what you, dare me? And like, looks like she's like reaching for like a, like a, a hammer that's kind of hanging on. It's like, I mean, it's like a meat tenderizer, um, but she's pulling it off her belt. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and roll initiative. Oh my god, my rolls suck tonight. What uh, E four hundred four? What did you get uh, in your investigation? Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Uh, describe to me what you're, how you're going about. Uh, what are you looking? What are you looking at? What are you looking for? Um, I'm looking first of all if there's any clues to where he might have decided to go, or if there's any 
Clue's connections with him and Harkin. <laughs> okay. Um, and where are you doing this? Are you uh, looking about his desk or the room? Mostly about the desk and the drawers. Okay. Um, all right, yeah, give me... Uh, first off, everybody, give me uh, your initiatives. And E44, give me a, a, a dexterity saving throw as you're going through the drawers. Uh, is this a danger I can see? Um, yeah, as you pull one drawer open that wasn't shut, you see the runes uh, of an of a sigil on the bottom of the desk drawer begin to light up. Um, so yes, it is something you can see. Okay, I got the advantage on that, mm -hmm. which is just a ten. Still, ten. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, yeah, you're uh, you are going to take. Yeah, you're going to take uh, 20 fire damage as a what? burst of flame flies out from this drawer, encompassing the area in and around you, um, and a fire quickly starts in the papers in and about his desk. Yes. Um, and that's what you're dealing with, but we're going to cut back outside. What was everybody's initiative? Mine was a seven. <laughs> Mine was an 11. I only got an 8. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay. Uh, Hilda. The dwarves go at the same time. Okay. So out of the. Um, Out of the crops, this Yeth Hound comes bounding. And Hilda, you are looking like you're about to turn tail and run. And this thing sees that and senses the fear. Um, but Elry, you could tell this this thing was like bounding straight for Hilda um, from the beginning. Like from the time you heard the yelp and everything, its eyes were trained on her. And whether like you a spark of remembrance uh, when you first encountered these things. You remember that one was running right at Hilda and one was running right at you. And y'all did do some damage to this thing in the earlier battle, but this is definitely the same hound. Uh, and it, it once again is making a beeline for Hilda. And so it is going to attack... Uh, yeah, 21 hits you. Yes, I believe it does. Okay, so you're going to take 11 damage, and also, as it bites into you, th this thing, it's like a nightmare that actually caught you, right? And so you're going to take a further 14 psychic damage as the sheer terror of this thing catching up to you and grabbing onto you uh, is just almost overwhelming. Ooh. Ouch. That is its turn. It is now Elry's turn. Okay, Elry's going to turn as soon as he sees his captain in trouble, knowing exactly what happened in the last combat where she saved his butt from the honey chain girl. He is going to run and charge, rapier out, and he's going to come in with dagger and rapier uh, and attack this bad boy. Oh, my rolls are uh, Asha, 17. 9 plus 8. 17 hits. Okay. Um, 7 plus... Ooh, that's not bad. 6, 6, 20, uh, 13 sneak attack, 7 uh, regular, so it is 20 altogether. Okay. And, yeah, and your rapier is magic? Yep. Okay. Yeah, your, your blade slips in just behind its shoulder blade and it <laughs> kind of coughs and sputters and turns and looks at you and gives you just like this beady-eyed, like angry growl. Uh, Hilda. Uh, wait, can I do one more thing? I wanted oh, to I'm bonus. Sorry. Yeah, I wanted to bonus action, disengage. And I mean, I don't have the ability to taunt or anything. I'm not a kender, but um, he's going to flip back and he's going to stand there and he's going to be like, come on. Come on, pup pup. Let's see what you got. Okay. 
So you 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 try to goad it into uh, attacking you, and it, right now it's like looking at you, and then looking at Hilda, and looking back at you. The wound you dealt it, uh, Hilda. It is your turn. Um, so you must uh, go ahead and move as fast as you can to try to get away from it. Okay, I move twenty five feet away from it. Okay. Um, so you don't have to continue to move, but that's that's as, but you have to at least move away from it. You now you still have an action, um, and you are frightened. But do you want to do anything else with your action? I can do something with my action, like anything. Anything else? Well, I mean, uh, when you're frightened, you just have to move away from it, and you can't move closer. I think you have disadvantage to uh, attack it. Is that right? No. Um, Disabil- uh, disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls. Source of fear is in sight, um, but you can't move closer to the source of fear. That's it. Okay. Um, she's going to uh, cast a spiritual weapon, if this is the case. Okay. Um, and it is. it looks different than it used to. It used to look kind of like a smithing hammer. And now it kind of looks like a, like something that's kind of carved out of stone, um, like pure gray, sparkly granite. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay. Is your is your granite hammer? Is it still a hammer though? Grand hammer. Yes. Yeah. All right. Because she's old, and it's stone. It's grand hammer. Um, yes. She's doing that. Okay. Yep, man. I messed up on D and D Beyond. So that's all she can do this time. It just kind of comes into existence. Um, well, oh, I mean, when you cast it, you can still attack with it. Oh, you can. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay. Um, then that's what she's gonna do. Um. It's an eleven hit it. Uh, eleven does not. Uh, it looks like it's, it's kind of like, hopping back and forth, thinking like, who's he going to attack? And he just kind of like hops out of the way as you swing at it. Um, um, but it looks like that you may have uh, forced it to head towards Elry. Oh. As it kind of ducked out of the way uh, and decides to seek vengeance on the source of its pain. Okay. And uh, Olga looks like she is going to run forward and take a swipe at it, uh, but spend a little bit too much time in the kitchen and she misses. Um, Dakul, you are up by the stables. You're right. probably, um, from where they are, you're probably about, I'm going to say about 100 feet away because you were kind of like waiting at the corner of the stables. Yes. And they're at the other end of kind of the crops and all that. Yes. Okay. Uh, he is well within the range of my longbow. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I will pull my longbow out, uh, and I get uh, two attacks with that. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, the first one. Uh, eight. Are you, because uh, you haven't done this while, I'll go ahead and remind you, remember your bonus action to add the extra damage to your ranged attacks with your Kinsai weapon? Yes. So, uh, yeah, so the first one was an 18. 18's a hit. Yes. Go for my eight. Hold on. There we go. Uh, nine. Nine. <laughs> uh, nine damage or nine to hit? Uh, no, nine damage. The 18 hit for the first one. Okay. All right, so I was, ro- I was rolling damage after that. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, so nine damage. Cool. Yeah. And then your second attack. Nineteen. Nineteen's a hit. Haha, yes. Eight plus ten. Plus two more is twelve. Okay. Uh and and these arrows, uh they are they're just non magical, correct? Yes. Or wait. No, you're you're uh, of a level that your attacks are magical, right? Yes, yes. Okay. It's good to know. 
Okay. Um, so that's that's your turn. Wrapping back around to E-404. E, as this conflagration has sprung up in your face, <laughs> just Thank out of nowhere. Thank God for fire resistance. Huh? Thank God for fire resistance. Well, there's hell that. barbs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, what, what do you do in the immediate aftermath is this, uh, as pretty much like part of his desk and the corner and like papers that are all stacked up and fallen over are, are now catching fire quickly. There's nothing of like immediate, like notebook or anything that could be savable. Uh, give me a perception check. Oh, boy. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, that is a... 19. Okay. Um, yeah, the the explosion itself kind of knocked over a pile of papers that are that are now uh, kind of catching and, 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 and going up into into cinder and ash, but it uncovered uh, a very uh, small like black ledger. Yeah, he's getting that. Uh, nothing else that I had found in my investigation, I'm assuming, after before setting off this trap? Um, I mean, uh, nothing that immediately like springs out like contraband or, or whatever. You do see um, on the desk a, a letter opener that is, uh, the handle is a very finely carved, like looks like scrimshaw. Hmm. That's the only other thing that really catches your eyes. Any kind of, that's the only kind of adornment. His desk is very plain. It's a very plain square desk. There's not like a, you know, there's not like a cup holder with like number one's teacher or anything like that on it. You know, he doesn't have a lot of, there's not a lot and of if, frill. And if he's booked it, then he would have taken most of his stuff. Okay. Right. But that's the only other thing you see is just like, like I said, like it looks like a letter opener with that's that the, the handle is like a, bo like a bone, like a scrimshaw, like a carved. Okay. He will just pick that up. There's just in a panic mode right now. Uh, okay. Like, oh God, there's <laughs> so much happening. Okay. Uh, and they're gonna head out and to the Grand Magus be like, hey! Okay, so you're gonna like happened. go out and run upstairs? Okay, so you're heading out and running upstairs uh, to to alert the Grand Magus of the fire. Yep. Um, I didn't set it this time. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but will they believe you? Will they? Um, okay, so back to the top of the initiative. Elry, you have this this uh, Yeth Hound bearing down on you. He's like running, but his feet aren't touching the ground. They're about, again, they're about six inches off the ground, but he's like running right at you. And right as he's about to like leap and jump at you, um, darkness springs up around you. Um, and you are engulfed uh, in darkness. Uh, so, that happens there and then this thing is going to take a snap at you wow uh and it actually connects uh even uh in the darkness uh you're going to take 11 as you feel the 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 teeth of this thing kind of nip down as you were kind of jumping out of the way and it catches you on a forearm what was the uh the roll uh, I mean, I, I rolled at disadvantage, and I rolled a 16 and a 17, so that's going to be a 23 or 24 to hit. Damn. Okay. I just have to know the numbers. Oh, okay, no worries. Um, okay, so yeah. uh, cunning action to take that to what? Six. We always Six. round up, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That. Um, and you and Elry, uh, give me a perception check. Fourteen plus four, uh, eighteen. Yeah, um, and I didn't have you do it at, at, at disadvantage because this was sound. Uh, and you definitely heard off to your left in in the crops movement, uh, quick, quick, swift movement. Um, right, because these things couldn't cast that before. This didn't come from the hounds. It came from those other Shadow Kai or whatever they were called. Mm -hmm. Shadar. Yeah. Okay. Elry, it is your turn. You are currently in darkness. 
with the with the a uh, yeth hound snipping at your forearm. Okay, uh, Elri is going to disengage with his bonus action. He is going to use his movement to go into the shrubbery into the direction of the sound that he identified, okay. and see if he uncovers anything when he like charges into that area. Okay, go ahead and uh, as you, okay, so go ahead and move out and give me a quick perception check as you move uh, out of the darkness. Uh, I'm going to luck that three. And that's good because now it is a 23, 19 plus four. Okay, about 15 feet away from you, uh, you you see uh, the other, uh, it was one of the Darkling Elders. He's got, he's got a short sword out, his hands out and he looks up. He's got his scarf kind of covering his face, beady red eyes looking at you in pure hate. Um, and he's like, like sniffs at you and He's like readying his sword as he sees you. Um, can I clear to him with my movement or is he too far out of my movement range to exit the, the shadow and uh, get to him? Well, it was a 15 foot radius sphere. So you had to at least move 15 feet to get out of it. And he's about 15 feet away from you right now. So I can get within five feet of him if I so desire. Yeah. Uh, instead of doing that, he's going to have his rapier out and pull the gun out and aim it at him and take a shot. All right. Unless he can see the dog, can he see the dog? No. Like, is it a wagon or something? <laughs> like no, no, out? it's it's firmly uh, hidden inside the sphere of darkness. That's a natural twenty, and oh, now I'm like real scared. Okay, all right. And remind me again, that was a 1d8 plus for yeah. damage for that? Yeah, it's a d8 damage. d8 force damage. So that's a 6 plus a 4 is 10, and double that for uh, to 20 with the 20 force damage as he fires right. that. Well, you double the die. You don't double your okay, mod. 16. 16, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm nervous. That's okay. Uh, 27, okay, that's a, that's a 16, okay. Yeah, you you kind of shoot out there and pop your pop your pistol out, fire it off, and it takes him in the, in the upper shoulder, and he's like, ah. <coughs> and he kind of coughs and looks at you in, in pure, like, disdain. And uh, that's the end of your turn. Uh, Hilda. You are free to move. You have uh, you have broken the fear that took you. There's a sphere of darkness at the edge of the crops, about about thirty feet, about twenty five feet away, and then yes. you see Elry in the crops firing at something, but the it's hard to see what he's shooting at because they're about two two three rows in. Mm -hmm. So, while E four four was commuting with with Rontame, we had a rest. Yes which meant that Hilda had some time to retool some things. So as she marches back towards this dark sphere, she starts murmuring something, and in the center of it, you see this great and powerful and grand light um, blip into the center of it. Or maybe just the darkness blips out of existence because she casts daylight on it. Um, so a 60-foot radius sphere of light. Uh, on the dark darkness itself? I cast into the darkness. Okay. You cast daylight and it erupts and tears asunder this darkness. And as it bleeds away for a split second, you can see the Yeth Hound. And it looks at the light and like, yeah! and then it, you see it kind of collapse in on itself mm -hmm. and disappear. It, dis it doesn't like, like the other one did. It doesn't like explode or or, or whatever. Uh, well, it was uh, just so you remember. It was the it was the uh, the darkling Eldar like the handlers of the hounds that it, that one exploded, right. not the hound itself. Okay. Um. The hound yeah. died and kind of dissolved in the shadow. Okay. Um. So next, case, she's gonna look around. She's gonna see if she can see where Elry and this other thing are. Okay. And what's the duration on daylight, or is it just daylight. instant? It's, um, the duration is an hour. Okay. It's there, on the quad. It's like the church group showed up on the quad. Just, oh. Um, 
and yeah, so she's going to do that, and then she's going to move her spiritual weapon uh, okay. 20 feet towards um, Elry. Yeah? Uh, towards Elry or what Elry's shooting at? Towards what Elry is shooting at. Okay. Uh, I would let you, you can kind of make out a shape, but there's so much foliage and everything, I would say you can make an attack at disadvantage. But it's cool. well because it was kind of halfway between. It's where the Yeth Hound started, so it's only about twenty feet away from that. Ah, uh, it only gets an angle. Okay, yeah, you you know you swing the hammer and it kind of just like cuts through some some corn or something and just misses, doesn't find purchase. Um, okay, and then Olga is going to. She's going to yell like. Elry! And like she runs into the to the crops and like runs up on this on this thing and takes a swipe. And yeah, she uh, Elry, you see that she you know her cooking's great, it really is. But you know she swipes at him and he he easily kind of dips right underneath it like, and you know as he flows, I mean it, it, he literally looks like it's like shadow flowing. Um, that's the end of that. Dakul, it is your turn. Uh, Dakul, you see... Uh, actually, Dakul, you're going to be at a severe disadvantage to everything right now because there is daylight shining bright and your 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 drow heritage uh, has passed along it, the sensitivity to said daylight. So even with your sunglasses on, all your attacks, any kind of anything based on sight is going to be at disadvantage. Okay. For as long as that daylight is up, because it's like literally like right there, like sixty feet away from you. Okay, uh, I want to uh, to. It's still like about a hundred feet away, right? Because I know it's a different target than than the hound. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's on the other side of the crops. So yes, it's still about a hundred feet away. Um, and again, it you see Elry down there, like down one row, like if you just kind of step to the side a few feet, like you can look down the row of crops and see it at the other end, but there's Elry, Olga's fighting this thing. Um, but yeah, it's about a hundred feet away. Okay, I want to close the distance uh, with, uh, I got like 45 meters, 45 feet of movement. Okay. So I want to close the distance and then uh, pull, pull out my longbow again uh, and, and try and squint through, through okay. the blinding light uh, and I'm gonna roll with disadvantage. Okay, go ahead. 18 and 15 and 15. So 23. 23 hits? Uh, this two is 11. 11 damage. Okay. You, uh, <clears throat> you sink an arrow deep in this thing's chest as it like was easily ducking almost you could almost hear like a like a cackle like it was laughing at Olga's ineptitude trying to hit it um, and it just dips right up as your arrow releases and the thing just sinks right into its upper chest opposite the side like it almost matches mirror for mirror where Elry hit it on the upper shoulder on one side and an arrow sinks like right to the right to the to the fletching uh, goes almost through him and he <laughs> stumbles and like stumbles to a knee or whatever and and Olga's standing there like holding his hair back and is about to like smash his face in almost <laughs> e4 sure. four. yes Hi. you're back in the Magate Acadium yep you're heading upstairs and there is the Grand Magus behind his desk um, I am sorry to interrupt Grand Megas, but there is a fire in Krill's office. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. What? There is a fire in Krill's office. And and immediately the the mostly normal like chill elf like you know he's been smooth as whatever like he immediately like just reaches his hand out and the staff flies to it. And he like strides forward and puts his hand on your shoulder, and y'all, and you are down outside of Krill's office um, immediately. And he strides in and begins casting spells. Um, and that's like like literally like you're upstairs now. You're downstairs looking out in the office, and he begins 
a, a torrent of activity. Um, do you do anything with the rest of your action? <laughs> I'm just gonna help as much as I can as a robot trying to put out fires. Okay, it's I mean, there are helpful. jars of, 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 like, liquid with things in them um, yeah, it's just, all just, over. Just... <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> They're panicky! They don't know what to do! They've never been awake for their... They've never been aware for their fires. Yeah, it's 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 an odd feeling, isn't it? Yep. Um, okay, so ba- uh, back outside. Um, we're gonna drop out of initiative right now, because this thing is this thing is like literally like laying on the ground, like trying to grab as its sword as Holga Olga's like holding it. She's about to like smash its face in. <clears throat> what 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 do y'all want to do? Huh? It's 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 down. Who sent you? Why have you attacked us? Separosi kalo to mo doya ra foto mo di kambora. Does uh, anybody? What, what languages does everyone speak here? <laughs> Deep speech, dwarvish, no mission, common. Yeah, dwarvish, elvish, and gnomish. Okay. Uh, Hilda, you you hear this thing? Uh, it's speaking in an odd dialect of Elvish, but it's basically like saying, "Finish me, finish me. Be honorable about this. Finish me." I know how to finish him. We'll finish you in our way. Drag him towards the light. If uh, you want, if you want. More mercy. You can tell us why you keep attacking us. The the cool's gonna grab him by his legs and listen to what Elry just said and start dragging him towards the light. And you can like you can feel the arrow that you put through him like it's like dragging on the ground and he's like ah! <laughs> like kind of screaming. And you you pull him into the light and and um It begins to, you see the light where it touches his skin as he has this scarf up. The end of his nose begins to like sizzle and light motes of, of, of ash and cinder start coming off of it. And he's like, ah, ah, how dare you, you curse it. And he like spits at Hilda. We will find the abomination. We will take it from you. You cannot hide it forever. You cannot hide it. We will take it. And he like looks around almost like he's starting to get worked up into like a fervor as like more of his like his nose and now his fingers that are exposed start to burn. And he like looks at you. Ah, you fucking cowards. And it like takes the arrow and rips it across his own chest down into his heart. And... I need to know who's standing right around him. That would be me. Hilda, are you right there too? Yeah, she'd be right there. Okay. Yep. As he like rips that across, the same thing happens. His body begins to like glow, this incandescent glow, and just (laughs) light explodes from below you and around. Um, I'm going to need a DC 11 uh, constitution save. Three is 12, huh? <laughs> Not 20. Okay, both of you, um, neither of you are blinded. I mean, you already have the sunlight spell, like, right there. So it's already bright here, but you you each take three uh, radiant damage as as this flash of light sends off. And uh, also, everybody give me a perception check. Uh, Elry was there, too, so he takes three as well. He had a 16, 17, okay. minus one for his. Okay. You said a perception check, right? Correct. Another nat 20. Wow. 12. <laughs> okay, 22. Hilda. Uh, I'm sorry? 22. Oh, 22. Okay, Hilda and Elry, you both feel the ground kind of 
sh- just shudder and shake just for a, the briefest of seconds in the uh, wake of that explosion. Put on to me. And here you are. Here you stand with little little motes of cinder floating down around you of what used to be this, whatever this thing was, this this darkling elder. Um, e, uh, it's only a few moments you manage to put the fire out, and of course the Grand Magus is like, "What is what is what has happened here? What what is going on?" I. I believe that Krill is involved with the situation with Haskell Harkin and has escaped. (sighs) Okay, well, just let me know how I can help. We should find my friends. They are waiting for me to return with Krill, but as you can see, he is not here. Yes, yes. I want to be apprised of this situation. I I cannot have this at the academy. This is this is beyond the pale. Yes, let us go meet them. I will help you in any way I can. I swear to you. And you all begin to head downstairs. Um, back downstairs, standing in the light of your sunlight spell. What do y'all do in the immediate aftermath of this? As people begin to come back out, looking around buildings, those that had run away at the first baying of the hound. Um, this is the second time. There cannot be a third. We have to get down to the bottom of this. It, it cannot be just a mere coincidence that when we come to see Krill, these shadow beasts appear out of thin air. They think we have something. Something that is... But wretched, what could we be carrying? Don't know. By the way, Olga, you're fucking hired. By the way. Totally oh, hired. Oh, I, oh. And she's like sitting there like still holding her hand, her like meat tenderizer, hand slightly shaking, other hand on her chest. Like, I uh, don't usually deal with this much excitement. Oh. So sorry, I should have made a better uh, showing of myself. Oh, please. Sorry. You just did, you did just fine. I ran away. You're like, you're totally fine. Um, well, I, I suppose you're right. So you're the new cook. I hope you can make hamster food too. Uh, of, oh, of, I know many, uh, uh, many recipes uh, in the use of, uh, of Giant space hamsters. Uh, I used to work on a gnomish galley. Um, are you are you preparing this one for for meal soon? For a meal? Of course not. This is my friend. Oh, oh, he's, he's hellion, and he is nobody's meal. I, I apologize. I'm I'm sorry. Like I said, I, I worked on a gnomish galley, and it, it, they're a delicacy. No, to feed my dear hellion. That oh. you feed him to us. Yes, I did. I, I make a I make a lot of uh, food for the uh, for the master's mounts. Yeah. Yes. Then good job, Elry. You have done exceptional. I didn't do anything. I just found her, and she's awesome. Um. What about this krill? Ah. Uh, I have no idea where he could be. And about that time is when E and the Grand Magus uh, arrive down. There's a a big daylight spell just <laughs> like burning there, and and um, the, the 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 Magus is like, uh, do, "Do you mind if I do you mind if I get get rid of that?" Oh, 
Sure, if you, if you want to. I mean, it might keep them keep them away a little longer. Keep keep what away? More of those shadow people. You were you were attacked by Shadow Fay again for the second time. This time on the grounds of your illustrious university. Well, you did say that one got away. Um, hmm. What could they want? And he like, he just kind of like turns and looks back towards the harbor. They said they wanted an abomination. I could hear them. It was some form of Elvish. They said we, they thought they had something. Or they thought we had something. And they called it an abomination. What world would we have done to offend this shadow thing? Wait a minute. I remember in my research for my Elry's supplemental log that their fay, the boat, the Don Rose, has a fay in it. They want the boat. Had the fay presence is what the academics found when they examined the ship. Uh, Elry starts running towards the boat. Okay. And as Elry begins to bound towards the boat and the camera pans up, we're going to leave it off at this moment, at this moment in time. For next week and for future adventures, here on Starward Bound, The Incredible Journey, as more questions, more answers, even more questions, but some more answers along with some more questions. So what is going on? It's craziness. I don't know. Um, anyway, I hope everyone is having a good time. Hope you all enjoyed it this evening. Uh, let's let's run around to uh, cast and crew, see how everybody liked it, see what they liked about it. Um, and we're going to start with you, Greg. We're going to go in reverse order as always. Oh, I, I had a blast. I, I love this game. I love playing Elry because there's absolutely no filter lid or thought about what I'm saying. Even when I start talking and I thought I had the mute button on, and I don't, and uh, I apologize for that. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, this is a, an incredible cast to be a part of. It is so much fun. Um, the things that are dropped are, uh, okay, I, I always get a line of the night, and my line of the night, this came from Trey, when he had to cool say, there was the comparison between the fucking ears and Elry, and the only excuse or the only different differentiation he could come up with was what Elry is ours. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the best line. There really is no difference, but he's ours. I love this game so much. I look forward to it every single week. Uh, Grimjack21502 on the Twitches and the Twitters. Please follow me on uh, both Twitch and Twitter. In my schedule there. Um, let's see. What am I going to promote this week? I will promote Conan, Age Undreamed of, on my channel Friday, every Friday from 12 to 2 Eastern. Uh, Emma is currently on there and she is playing a dope sorceress. So please check it out. It's dark, it is Cthulhu y, and it is fantasy, and it's low and it's fun. So see you there and see you here next week. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, uh, I'm almost done with that episode. Melts a dude's face off with acid. It's amazing. Anyway. Uh, move on over to Kiana. How's it going, Kiana? How'd you enjoy the evening? Oh, I love this game so much. So cool. Uh, it's so cool. Um, we have 10 million plot threads. I'm trying to keep them straight in my head. It's really hard. <laughs> you can I, tell it. thinking is really hard for me today as it took me five minutes to figure out this plan. <laughs> Good job, which me. But your part was, hey, go get that guy and bring him over here. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't understand because I was like, right. why are we going there? <laughs> I, I'm I'm very on top of it today. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but um, no, I I love this cast. I love this crew. Uh, chat, you're wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, God, don't know what's gonna happen next week, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, in the meantime, you guys can find me over on Twitter at Kenna S. The best way to figure out what I'm doing at any given point because I am all over the internet all through the week. Um, I, this week, uh, I'm going to plug my Dungeon World campaign over on Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, over on Anna Rice's channel. Uh, 
if you would like to see me play someone who is extremely charismatic, talks their way out of everything, um, and the complete opposite of E, um, definitely check me out there because I play the most ostentatious bard that has ever barded, ever. So super fun stuff. Uh, definitely check it out. But until next week, I can't wait for it to go back into space. For adventures in space. Space adventures. Space um. adventures. <laughs> <laughs> space what? fights against space things and space adventures. Yes, <laughs> that's, that, that's all you have to do. And it's spell jammer. Uh, let's move on up to uh, Trey. How, how'd you enjoy the evening, sir? Man, I was betrayed by Grill, that rat bastard. He told me he was my friend. He held my rodent and everything. He looked me in my eyes and lied to me. I'm upset. But the only thing that makes me happy out of that whole crazy betrayal is the fact that we got to kidnap somebody. <laughs> That is why I love this cast. This is what we do. Smoke, eat, snatch up kitchen maids and kidnap college students. That's how we get down at Starward Bound. So thank you, our lovely, lovely DM. Thank you, our producers. Thank you, everybody that has helped make this fantastic voyage what it is. Um, you can hit me up on the Twitter sphere. My name is at Sintel or at Instagram at the same way. The thing I'm going to plug is my pet passion that I love so much. Lights Camera Discover, where we teach the filmmaking and story making process to little kids all, all over the country. Uh, if you'd like to support it, just check us out. Check us out at lightscameradiscover.org. I guarantee you it's a lot of fun. Um, that's it, man. I just, whew, I can't take any more betrayal. So I'm gonna go ahead and have to walk this off until next week. Um, yeah, it's, it's sometimes it can get to you, man. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to betray your trust, but I'm the DM and it's my job. Um, <clears throat> and last but not least, our, our, our amazing communications director for WebDM, Emma Lambert. Emma, how was it? How'd you like it? That was a fun and morally gray and definitely not evil game of Starward Bound. I love how this show kind of really, like, I, I'm sure we're probably like completely over the line, but I feel like we tote the line between a good and evil game all the time. But you hurt our feelings. And I think you deserved it. Yeah. Um, this is a really fun one. I feel like there are a lot of things going on, but I feel like they're all moving at like a breakneck speed in a way that's totally great. We're not just sitting here like, well, what do we do next? And then spend two hours thinking about what we do next. And that is so refreshing and wonderful. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm the communications director of WebDM. Please follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Twitch, if you don't already. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at SusieKing85 if you want. Um, I have only one other game that I play on. It is Greg's Conan game. I burned a dude's face off with acid. And I'm a creepy sorceress. It's fun. I'm thinking about another one shot. I've been thinking a lot about evil games. I don't know anything else about it except it's going to be really fucking evil. Like, really. Like, disturbing. Like, really. Like, like it's going to piss some people off, hopefully. Kind of evil. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so that's it for me. I can't wait until next week. It's going to be awesome. Uh, yes, uh, I can't wait either. Um, I, I absolutely love this cast and crew. Uh, things are kind of moving at an interesting pace. Uh, anyway, I can't wait till next week. Uh, I am Prude. I'm the uh, one half of WebDM. We have videos on YouTube, on our channel every Wednesday. We'll have a new one tomorrow. Be sure to tune in for Star, or excuse me, for Land Between Two Rivers on Thursday, 6 p.m. Central, same time, same channel. Uh, also, get your clips in to Sean over at uh, PowerScore RPG, uh, and we'll get them on RPGN for uh, Sunday. Uh, if you saw something tonight you liked, be sure to clip it, send it in. I uh, just want to plug our sponsor one more, one last time. That's Tabletop Loot uh, at tabletoploot.com. WebDM15 is the code. It'll get you 15% off, but right now I believe the sale is 20% off. That's mugs, T-shirts, dice. Hit them up. Support our sponsors. They support us. Uh, also, remember, you got to follow or a subscription or, or a Amazon Prime sub. Send that on over. Uh, you know, we're here every Tuesday. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, one last thanks to uh, uh, Alexa Bonner, who created uh, uh, the majority of the art here. 
Um, and in conjunction with uh, Brandon, the behind the scenes uh, uh, switch flipper uh, at War Eagle Keep is his uh, Twitter handle. Uh, you also got Alexa's uh, Alexa underscore art uh, over there in the uh, chat. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for some art, she could draw you some and it'll be good. Trust me. Uh, so anyway, until next week, uh, as we always say, may the dice ever roll in your favor.